Thank you. The chair recognizes Ms. Stansbury from New Mexico. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I'm glad that uh, the last comments uh, wrapped up around the concept of what's happening with the economy in the real world, because the single largest threat to the economy in the real world right now is a government shutdown. And what is especially strange and ironic to me is that we're sitting here this afternoon after the majority failed to even get a continuing resolution to the floor to keep the U.S. government open, more or less pass a single appropriations bill to keep this governing uh, this government functioning. So if we want to talk about real world impacts, if we want to talk about people being able to pay their bills, put a roof over their head, buy groceries, and all of the things that we're talking about here today, let's talk about funding the government and making sure that the American government and our economy can stay afloat. Because that is the real world and that is our constitutional duty and responsibility. But it's also, you know, a strange hearing that we're having here uh, this afternoon as we are on the eve of this shutdown and hearing a bunch of uh, distorted and strange representations of the economy. Now, I'm going to admit I'm not an economist. I am a sociologist by training, um, but I am a former OMBer, and uh, I want to welcome my colleague who also served in the budget uh, office in the White House. Um, and I know when uh, folks actually understand the economy and don't understand the economy. And uh, I just want to talk about the facts for a minute. You know, um, Mr. Uh, Kogan, I appreciated some of the charts that you included in your written testimony to the committee. And I want to make sure that we share some of those today publicly because what we're talking about is the overall macro economy. When we say that the macro economy is actually doing well in the United States in spite of this post-pandemic hangover, and we'll talk about that and its impacts here in a moment, what we're talking about is the gross domestic product. And what we see in Mr. Kogan and your testimony, you've provided this chart here, uh, which is the real GDP of the United States. Is this correct? And yeah. what do we see right here? What's happening in the year 2023? Uh, thank you, Congresswoman. Um, you can see that it is back at the trend that's uh, back where CBO thought it would be um, before the pandemic. And what you can also see on this chart is that by billions of dollars by annual rate that we are above where we've previously been. So the GDP for the United States is on the rise. Now, part of the reason why we're seeing the economy come roaring back is exactly because of the policies that this body passed last, last Congress in which President Biden helped to champion. So first of all, I want to talk about the American Recovery Plan. Now, at the height of the pandemic, we had millions of Americans who were unemployed, people who didn't know if they were going to lose their homes. They didn't know if they're going to be able to buy groceries. They didn't know if they were going to be able to go to the doctor. And we passed the American Recovery Plan to get through the pandemic. It was not intended to be a stimulus in and of itself at the onset. It was meant to keep millions of Americans from falling through the crack in the most significant economic disruption that this country has seen since the Great Depression. And that is what it did. It kept millions of American people housed. It kept food on their table. It helped children get through the huge catastrophic impacts, parents. That is what the American Recovery Plan was about. Now, subsequently, we have passed three significant bills that have been causing the GDP to do this. That's the CHIPS Act, which has helped to reshore American manufacturing. It is the Inflation Reduction Act, which we've just been talking about, and it's the bipartisan infrastructure law, which is going to rebuild our roads, our water systems, and all of the infrastructure that we know our communities need to have a thriving economy. And guess what? The data don't lie. The data show us that American manufacturing and investment in American manufacturing is coming back with astounding consequences because here we are up here at the highest rate ever in American history. Finally, if my colleagues want to talk about inflation, let's compare American inflation to post-pandemic inflation in other countries. And what you can see in this chart in the testimony that has been provided to everyone on this committee is that American inflation with respect to other developing con developed countries across the world is at the lowest rates, lower than Canada, lower than the UK, and lower than most of the European community. So 
If our folks want to talk about facts, Let's talk about facts in the real world. The American economy is strong, it's coming back, but families are struggling. They're struggling because of the pandemic. They're struggling because we still have the effects of supply chain disruptions, of soaring housing costs and soaring food costs, and we've got to address them. And I can tell you factually one thing that is not going to make it better, and that's shutting down this government. So if my friends on the majority want to actually help American families, then pass the budget and I yield back.